Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And yes, we are going to talk about tires. Tires are the glue that keep the car on the tarmac. It is that glue which we refer to as grip that's going to make sure that the car does not slip out of a corner. That allows you to accelerate and that allows you to brake. And therefore, we need to talk about a couple of very specific parameters that define tires. But first of all, let's have a look what kind of tires exist. There is a whole raft of tires on the market and they all are developed for a specific purpose and a specific use. They differ in width, they differ in height, they differ in construction, for instance, radial tires, so they differ in the compound that's on it, so how soft is the rubber, what type of rubber is it. So there are a lot of parameters that define the tires and therefore they have developed a whole raft of different tires for different purposes. And the one that I have here is what we call a slick tire, specifically developed for the racetrack. They provide a huge amount of grip and you will notice immediately that there are no uh, treads on these tires. They are very smooth and flat. They are built with a special compound and the compound can be very soft or harder and there's all kinds of gradients in it to improve the grip. They also come in different sizes in terms of width and in terms of height. And also you will find different strengths for the actual walls around, around the sides. So you can fit those to very specific rims. But there is one thing they all have in common and that is a low slip angle and a very good cornering stiffness. Now this tire right here is what we call a wet tire or a rain tire. It is a softer compound but it's also built for the racetrack. Obviously you will find for commercial vehicles also winter tires and summer tires and that all relates to what kind of compound is used and also on the treading. Now you will notice on this tire that there is a tread on this car and that's quite obviously because you want to avoid aqua planning on the racetrack. But again also this tire has a very low slip angle and a very good cornering stiffness. And this tire is what we call a semi-slick. It's a combination between a rain tire and a slick tire. Again, for the circuit, again, it's having a very good slip angle and a very good cornering stiffness. I have only shown you a couple of tires. There are many more types on the market. You have those tires for commercial use, summer tires, winter tires. You have all terrain tires. You have uh, tires for trucks. You have tires for tractors. You have tires for go-karts, you have all kinds of tires and they all have very specific characteristics and that will make a difference on the grip and they are developed for maximum grip and maximum comfort for their specific purpose. Now of course on the racetrack you don't worry too much about comfort, you don't worry too much about noise, on the road it's different, on a commercial car you don't want to have too much noise from the tires and you don't want to have a high expensive tire either so they differ a little bit. I mentioned two critical words. That was cornering stiffness and the slip angle of a tire. And these are very important parameters that will define how well the car behaves when you're cornering. And now we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into that one because that will explain why a car slips, spins or doesn't slip at all when you're cornering at high speed. I used two words that are very important in terms of tire performance and that is the slip angle and that is the cornering stiffness. And this is what we're going to talk about now. But before we get into that, we need to talk about some very basic physics. I'm not going to get into mathematics because uh, that can be very complex. So let's start with static and dynamic forces. So let me give you an example of a static and dynamic force. I have right here a block of aluminum and it has a certain weight and it rests on a stainless steel panel. It has a certain friction. If the surface is smooth on both sides then the friction factor is low but if the surfaces are rough then of course the friction factor is higher. So we have a load pointing down and a friction. If I want to move this object to the left hand side, then I will have to apply a force right here. So I'm going to start pushing and I will increase my force until it moves. And at some point it starts to move. Once it moves, 
I have to apply less force. And I'm sure you all have experienced this in the past when you have to move heavy objects. Initially, you have to push hard, but once it's moving, you have to push less hard. And that is what we call dynamic and static forces. The point at which you start until the point that the object starts to move, this is what we call a static force. Once the object moves, we call it a dynamic force. If I was to draw a curve on the force I applied on the object to get it moving, you would see that it starts at zero, no force, and then it builds up in a linear fashion. And at some point, I overcome the friction point and the object starts to move. And then the force that I need to apply is far less and I can keep moving it with a steady force almost. So the linear part, this is what we call the static force and the once we go over the top this part we call the dynamic force and that is also on how tires work but a tire that's not exactly the same a tire is a very complex model first of all it is subject to many different forces acceleration forces the acceleration forces lateral forces uh, centrifugal forces i mean rotational forces a lot of forces are applicable on the tire including the weight of the car that will have a huge effect on it, but also the geometry of the car, the camber and the caster and the towing and all that will have an effect actually on how that tire is going to behave. But nevertheless, uh, race tires or any road tire is developed for a specific uh, slip angle. And in essence, um, the curve would look a bit like this. Now, you will see that on the top of the curve, once we reach that, point, reach that point, the tire is developing a lateral force. And the lateral force is on the left-hand side. Now, if we exceed the lateral force that the tire develops, which is all the way on the top of the curve, then we're going to start slipping with the car. And if we continue to push even more uh, forces on the corner, then we are going to lose control on the car. Basically, you get oversteer or you get understeer, and then if you continue to go, then you may even get a spin. And that's all the result of the loss of grip. So the trick here is when you drive with the car is trying to drive at the highest point. So you can corner as fast as you can until you reach that top point, and then you need to know, now I need to back off because then you're going to get a slip or oversteer or understeer. Now, race tires, they typically have a very low slip angle and road cars, they have a high slip angle on their tires. And I probably need to explain you now, first of all, what is a slip angle? Well, the point is, if I am going to drive my car and I point it to the left in a left-handed turn, then I'm going to direct the car to a certain angle. However, because of the elasticity of the tires, because they are very elastic, they will deform in the curve because we are moving the weight of the car to the outer wheels and you've seen that these tires they actually deform. In fact the tire wants to go another direction because of deformation. So now we have a difference between the way the tire wants to go and the way we are steering the car and that difference in angle this is what we call the slip angle. Not very complicated now on race cars, the slip angle is very low. And on street cars, we have a higher slip angle. Now the point is that a slip angle which is high is more comfortable, it's easier to drive with than a slip angle which is very narrow. That is far more direct feeling and you have to react faster. So now let's have a look on a graph where we have a high slip angle and a lower slip angle and then you will see exactly what I mean we can see that we have two traces. One is a two degree slip angle curve and the other one is an eight degree slip angle curve. Typically race car tires they have a two degree slip angle curve where daily driver cars have an eight degree curve. Now horizontally we have the slip angle specified and vertical the lateral force that the tire will develop. And as you can see in the yellow curve once we start off, we have a pretty steep linear rise of the curve to a pretty high point. And when we reach this point here, we're actually running into a problem. Here we're starting to slip. So this we need to stay clear of this area because otherwise we're going to have either a spin, oversteer or understeer. 
But if you compare that with the blue curve right here, you can see that the amount of force that we can develop on the tires, and which we call lateral force, is a lot bigger with slip angles of 2 degrees than slip angles of 8 degrees. So in other words, a small slip angle tire is going to allow you to go faster through a corner because the tire is going to develop more lateral force. However, as the angle is steeper, as you can see, they are also more difficult to drive with and you have to react much faster because you're going to climb up very fast. It's different for a 8 degree slip angle tire because there it is far more relaxed and this is why we have the difference between the tires. On the screen we display two slopes for two different tires. A tire with a 2 degree slip angle and a tire with an 8 degree slip angle. What is important to know here is that the slopes that you see here on the yellow one and on the blue one are quite different. If I was to look at the yellow slope for a given uh, power level, then I would have a zone there which defines how fast the slope is going. If I now do the same thing for the blue curve, then you'll see that we have a complete different slope. The slope is rising far less in terms of lateral force on the tire than the slope we had on the yellow one. I need to place them on top of each other because I want to do it in the same place. So here is the yellow one. And that explains why the cornering stiffness is much bigger for uh, tires with a slip angle which is low. It makes it a little bit more difficult to drive because this value will go up very quickly with a little change in the actual slip angle. So cornering stiffness is a very determining factor in the performance of tires. We all know that tire temperature is very important and the tire temperature is going to increase depending on how much lateral force we have. So if we are racing on a circuit and we are staying at a low speed, basically we don't develop a lot of lateral force. This is where we're going to develop the heat in this area. It's very small. However, if we go into race on a track and we are going to utilize the top point here, right here, then we have this whole yellow block which is going to provide heat to the tire. So it is important to have the tires warmed up on the circuit and therefore you want to run at this top marker here. This is where you want to be. You don't want to be in this blue zone right here and keeping the speed so low that the tires don't warm up. And tires really warm up a lot because of the lateral force. So now we know most of it, but I'm sure that you've seen in certain onboard cameras when people drive on the racetrack, the pilot is doing this with the steering wheel whenever he takes a corner. Now this movement is not because he is having understeer or oversteer. He does that for a very good reason. And therefore I need to explain you the self-centering of the self-alignment of the tires related to the forces on the tire and the patch. So let's talk a little bit about the patch first. The patch is the contact surface of the tire to the tarmac. And in this case, if you're driving in a straight line, this is where the patch is and it has a certain form. And the patch, the middle of the patch should be falling in the middle of the tire. If that is the case, then we have no lever, there's no forces there, no self-centering forces on that patch. However, if we start to corner with the car, then the patch is going to change. You see, this part is lifting up and the patch is moving away from the tire. Now, of course, the tire is not going to lift up like this. The tire will deform. But the point is that the patch is going to change. So depending what we do, if we corner left or right, the patch is changing. But also, if we accelerate or brake, the patch is changing. 
And if we go into brake and turn at the same time, then the patch is different again. So the patch of the tire to the surface is a constant changing pattern. And because of that, the handle is changing. You can consider the center of the patch towards the center of the tire. That is an ever-changing thing. And because of that, the curve that we looked at before is not exactly the same. We need to draw a second curve on that graph, reflecting actually what the patch is doing because the patch is having a huge effect on the grip, right? On the screen, we have the yellow line, which is our slip angle curve. We also have then the lateral force on the side and we're showing a tire patch, which is the gray part and the handle between the two central points, the central point of the tire and the central point of the patch. And this creates a force. This is the self-aligning force. And that results actually in the optimum point for the maximum amount of lateral force to be lowered to the blue point. The trick is now that a driver could actually turn into a corner and he would end up on the maximum spot here, the blue spot. But then by turning a little bit back to the opposite direction, that patch is going to change back to a little bit of a normal form. These two points will get closer to it, each other. We get a smaller handle and as a result, we're shifting up that way. Once we are there, then obviously uh, we're going to turn back in to the other direction again. So we're going to keep toggling back and forth between those two points. And that will actually give us a point somewhere in the middle of the average lateral force. If we were not to do that, we would be stuck on the yellow line right here. So this is a trick that professional drivers are very, very good in. So if he now can toggle between those two top points, he really gains. So because of the patch deforming when you turn, you're getting a, a greater handle on the patch itself towards the center of the tire, you're going to start slipping earlier. But if you can turn that wheel a little bit back again, so reducing again the slip angle, then you're going to recover that. The patch comes back a little bit more to normal. It has more grip again. But then, of course, while you, you're still driving, you're going to lose that again. And so by toggling between those two points, you can drive optimum. And that's what really good drivers do. And you, they have to feel on how to do that. I can't do it but I've seen people doing it to great success. So I hope that is clear on how the patch is working and the self-alignment of that patch. So folks, we've come to the end of this video and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you for viewing and bye-bye.